Stay tuned for your weekly news review on STVS. Good afternoon. My name is Randy Kromadi Harjo and this is your weekly news in review. We start with Thursday the 1st of May 2014. Solving the housing shortage is one of the problems that President Desiree Bautische wants to address. He said that on Wednesday, April the 30th, at the completion of 85 homes in Waterland in the district of Para. H.N. Boerenveen, chairman of the working group Restructuring Housing's Policy, indicates that the housing shortage in our country exceeds that was previously thought. All efforts is needed to address the problem effectively. Boerenveen further indicates that often more people are left out. The Foundation Relaxation Center for Disabled Children, SOGK, is expanding with more classrooms. On Friday the 2nd of May, they again got a visit from the CARICOM Secretariat Staff Association. The same delegation had already visited the Foundation last year. According to Frank Cameron, director of the SOGK, the visitors from the CARICOM were impressed with the work done by SOGK. The delegation got a tour again. On the premises of the SOGK, development takes place. Some students live and work independently at the SOGK. The buildings that are being constructed are needed for the 24-hour shelter of disabled children. After the guided tour, the delegation got to enjoy music from the students who will soon participate in a gospel song contest. SOGK again received a donation from the CARICOM. In connection with its 335th anniversary, Slans Hospital wants to draw more attention to maternal and child health care. That does not mean that men are excluded. They are also involved, said First Lady Ingrid Bouterse and Acting Director of the Ministry of Health, Leslie Resida. The Pregnant and So Fair was opened on Friday the 2nd of May at the Flamboyant Park. Various agencies and companies participated in the fair where the process from pregnancy to delivery was highlighted. The hospital has also unveiled a new logo reflecting the core value of the hospital. In his speech, Leslie Resida pointed out that the hospital didn't only reach a milestone. According to First Lady Ingrid Bouterse, the government has made every effort to ensure that attention is given to the child right from its birth. The Koran should be quoted appropriately. Hence, the Koran night is held every year. It is also an incentive to learn more about the religion and to do self-research. Isaac Jamaluddin, president of the Surinamese Islamic Organization, SEO, says that if those steps are taken at age five, they can bear fruit in the future. The Quran night was held for the second time and attendance was always high. Arif Juman, one of the participants, said that it's progressing. That is due to the stimulus of the parents and the enthusiasm of the youth. To the Quran night, a contest is also attached. The four newly sworn attorneys were admitted to the Court of Justice of Suriname on Monday the 5th of May. They are Rosanna Pinden, Ilse Sarks, Hannah Sussman, Samantha Gatschraats, and Jurgen Tamsiran. The event took place at a special public session in the Civil Affairs Courthouse in the Combeweg. Before they were admitted to the court, they had to take an oath first. Ivan Rasselbax, acting president of the Court of Justice, congratulated the newly sworn lawyers and welcomed them. He stressed to them the importance of honest exercise of the profession and the pressure that it entails. Attorney General Subhas Poonwasi was also present at the swearing-in of these lawyers. Both the newly sworn solicitors and the Dean of the Bar Association, Harish Monoret, expressed their displeasure over the affairs of the court. Suriname has 166 sworn solicitors. 
Surinamese volunteers who lost their lives during the Second World War 69 years ago were commemorated on Monday the 5th of May. They fought under the flag of Holland as part of the Allied troops in Europe and the Far East. The Second World War lasted from 1939 to 1945. War veterans and widows of deceased war veterans were present at the annual event. Reeds were laid by the district commissaris of Paramaribo Northeast, the commander of the National Army and the Chasse d'Affaires of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. The event took place at the Monument for the Fallen at the Independence Square. Next year, the 70th anniversary will commemorate it big. The five-floor building at the university complex, which was intended for the university students, is condemned. So says the Minister of Education, Ashwin Adin. The building does not meet a number of requirements and no cracks have been emerged. This building cannot be used by the students because it's not justified, says Minister Adin. Shailis Yetu is a student of the Faculty of Environmental Sciences and he lives in Saramaka. He is one of the students who have to travel every day to the university. He finds it troublesome that a building in which he thought he could take up a residence is now deprecated. Minister Adin said that they are now looking for other options for the students. An architectural firm has been contracted. On Friday the 2nd of May, during the budget debate in the National Assembly, DNA, attention was asked for the housing for students on and around campus. After the budget debate, the Ministry of Education will come with a concrete plan to realize the residential units for students. The airport management and Veluchthaven Beheer is doing everything in its power to make the safety of the Johann Adolf Pengel Airport meets international demands. Last Tuesday, the alertness of the staff was put to the test. All the sections that are present every day at the airport had to join the drill, an exercise in which staff can adapt their flexibility and management team can overcome the obstacles. And to make work proceed flawlessly, it's according to the management team, important that the staff of the airport regularly participate in similar exercises. With the help of external experts, a scenario was set up where a plane with 50 passengers made a failed landing. One of the most important points in this exercise was the time in which it's required to offer assistance for victims. According to Stephen Friese, airport master, it's about the safety of visitors and staff and to limit the damage in case, in case of emergencies. Friese said to be satisfied with the conduct of the drill and assured that the safety at the Johan Adolf Pengel Luchthaven is boosted again. Soon a review of the drill exercise will be conducted so that the management team can address the improvement points. The Task Force Sport and Accommodation of the Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs on Wednesday the 7th of May commenced with the construction of a new sports hall and toilets at the Aram Gulam Weg. According to the chairman of the Task Force, Faisal Abdul Ghafoor, this project will be carried out on behalf of the Surinamese youth nationwide. The director of the Department of Sport and Youth Affairs Luciano Mento di Cromo indicates that the importance of sports for the youth. Both the District Commissioner of Paramaribo Southwest, Mike Nerkus, and SMP Andre Misikaba have indicated that more such accommodations should be provided for young people in other parts of Paramaribo. Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ismanto Atna, says that it's a challenge to create sport accommodations for the current government. This project will be completed within five months. On Wednesday the 7th of May, Armand Sunder was sworn in by President Desiree Bouterse as member of the State Council. Sunder is a representative of the Council for Trade Union Federation Suriname, Rafat Sur. 
He pleads for unity in the trade union movement. For the president, the state council is very important because he appreciates the opinions of this body that has been around for 25 years. The president has also sworn in to surveyors. Thus, Rachel, who is now officially a surveyor, has been waiting years for this, and also a society cannot be built without the contribution of a surveyor. Bautische indicates that there is a shortage of surveyors. This was our last item for this episode. For all the mothers, we wish a happy Mother's Day. Stay tuned in for the next episode with my presenter, my colleague, Miss Dakota Simpson. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for your weekly news review on STVS.